Hello, beautiful souls. I'm here to show you and teach you and guide you in a video of why your affirmations aren't working and what to do about it. It's a free little workshop style. I love teaching and I, for those who don't know me, I'm Megan Elise. I am a rapid transformational therapist. I specialize in helping women overcome chronic anxiety without years of therapy so that you can feel that true inner peace, happiness, and manifest the dream life you desire. And part of that is a lot of self-talk and affirmations. And some people might be like, well, I've been trying these affirmations out and they don't work. Okay, I'm gonna tell you in this video why they're not working, a six-step process to help and make them work. And so that you can actually feel those mental, emotional, physical shifts that you want your affirmations to do for you. I'm gonna give you a mini exercise. So you'll want your notebook and pen for this. I'm taking you on a journey. You won't wanna skip this because inner work is so integral for our mental health, for creating what you want into your life and truly just enjoying life. So first off, your affirmations are not working because you cannot override deep rooted negative limiting beliefs with positive affirmations. What do I mean by this? What are limiting beliefs? Limiting beliefs are within your subconscious. And if you're not sure what your subconscious is, we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. And science and studies prove we run off of our subconscious 95% of our day. Subconscious means below consciousness. You might not even be aware of your limiting beliefs, but think of anything in regards to love or relationships or money or even your mental health. If you believe you can't have something or do something or you're not worthy or good enough, these are limiting beliefs. You can probably hear in other people when they talk about certain subjects, it's like, that's really limiting. Why would you want to believe that? Limiting beliefs. So unless you start doing subconscious work, you're not even going to understand or realize that you have these limiting beliefs within your subconscious. So you need to first pull the root out of the limiting belief before you can put positive affirmations in. So for example, think of dirt. Your subconscious limiting beliefs are dirt and the positive affirmations are glitter. And you're just putting glitter on this dirt so you end up with glittery dirt. It's not doing anything. So you're saying, I'm confident, I'm successful, I'm at ease, I'm calm, I'm a money magnet, yet nothing is changing, you're not feeling any different, your physical reality hasn't changed, everything just remains the same. This is telling you that you have subconscious limiting beliefs that you need to remove first because your conscious mind, that's your desires, that's your, your dreams, your goals, um, your affirmations, that's conscious work. But 95% of your mind is subconscious. So you can't be doing conscious work that needs subconscious inner work to be done, okay? Affirmations only work when you rip that root out of the subconscious limiting belief. Now there's this nice hole you can implant and now plant those positive affirmations. So whether it be mindset, money, job, success, confidence, anything, notice how you're feeling when you say those affirmations. And if you have like resistance to it, like your body does not lie. Your body is telling you, you have a limiting belief that you need to remove. So where do these limiting beliefs come from? Significant events from our childhood or any age that your subconscious has deemed as painful. So shame, guilt, embarrassment, sadness, any painful emotion is going to, it's going to lock on to that significant event and come up with limiting beliefs to make sure you don't experience that pain again. Cause that's your subconscious mind's job is to move you away from pain. It's a survival mind. It wants you to survive and pain is not surviving. So this is what RTT, my sessions actually do. We go back to the significant events and we heal, remove, release, whatever limiting beliefs were attached to that event. If you're not ready for a session yet, I got you. This is what you can do. Okay, so it's a six step process. I really encourage you to write things down. Um, I'm spilling so much tea here for you. I really wanna add value and help you and this will get you going 
on this subconscious work, okay? So you're actually going to write. You're going to free write. I want you to not pick up the pen because if you pick up the pen, now your conscious mind is trying to think of answers, right? So it's not thinking. Your thinking mind is your conscious. We want it from your subconscious, which is more of your emotional and feeling mind. So when you're answering these questions, and I'll put them in the description, I want you to just keep on writing. And again, now this is coming from your subconscious and you're going to really understand where this limiting belief is coming from and you can pull the root out. So first of all, I want you to do a quick meditation and meditation brings us into a low alpha brainwave state. So it helps us let that conscious analytical logical thinking mind drift away and the critical factors shut down so that we can access the subconscious. So let's just do actually a quick little meditation right now together. Um, feel free if you want to pause the video and find a longer meditation to do because we want to get you more into the subconscious, which again, it's just a brainwave state. So it's a theta brainwave state but low alpha will help you get there as well okay so I just want you to close your eyes and root your feet down into the ground so you can feel grounded you can feel supported you can feel held and close those beautiful eyes and just allow my voice to guide you here and taking a deep breath in through your nose and any stresses any worries any woes from your days let that out with a heavy a heavy exhale and just feel your shoulders relax your forehead relax take full deep breath in and let that breath come from your belly especially if we're feeling anxious or tense we breathe more in through our neck and we don't get that full capacity that we can get with belly breaths and exhale let that go and keep this deep rhythmic slow breath and just feel your body start to relax and sink and soften into whatever chair, couch, bed you may be on. And I just want you to allow my voice to continue to be what you focus on, your breath, being in the present moment versus living in our head. Let's drop down into our hearts so we can Bring our heart and our mind into coherence. And how we can do that is just focusing on the heart, breathing into your heart. So as you're focusing on your breath, focus into breathing in your heart. And this might sound odd, this might sound weird, especially if you've never done this before. Having an open mind. And then we can actually get answers too from our heart. Our heart is far more wise than the limiting beliefs that are in our mind. So the more you can connect to your heart before you have to make a decision. If you're confused, our heart is truly, truly more wise. And this isn't woo woo. This is coming out from so much research on our heart. Just tuning into your heart. And with a big smile on your face, take another deep breath in. And when you exhale, just blink your eyes to open. So hopefully you're feeling more centered and more at ease. Again, we just want to bring our mind to a lower brainwave state okay so now i want you to bring out your pen bring out your paper and you're going to write down step number one is what is that limiting belief so for example um no one will ever love me i can't have that job i'm not smart enough money is really hard to make that's a limiting belief my friends that is a limiting belief okay <laughs> um i don't have enough time that's a limiting belief too anything that limits you that feels restrictive or like you're almost trapped um these are limiting beliefs Okay, unless they feel good, unless you feel great, they are not liberating beliefs. Okay, so I want you just to write down one, one that you notice is really, really affecting you and have that written down. Okay, so that is your limiting belief. Which one are you focusing on? Now, number two, is it really your belief? Is it really your belief that I'm going to go with... Um, I'm not good enough because this one I find with my clients with anxiety, they 
all have this limiting belief that I'm not good enough. And that creates a lot of anxiety because I'm not good enough for this job. I'm not good enough for this relationship. I'm not good enough to leave my house. I'm not good enough to da 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 da, right? It shows up a lot in, in every area of your life. So is this really your belief or did someone tell you this? Did a family member, did a teacher, did a friend? not necessarily maybe say you're not good enough but maybe you're not smart enough or you got broken up with somebody and then now you're like well i'm not good enough because they broke up with me like is this really your belief okay now number three what happened below the age of seven that you can subconsciously go back to that would have eluded you to believe this. Remember, I want you to keep writing. Keep writing, don't let your pen come up, even if you're writing nonsense. So, oh, at the age of six, I was in grade two. This is actually a personal example. I was in grade two. Teacher told me that if I didn't do better in school, that they would hold me back. And instantly, I remember I felt not smart enough, not good enough. Oh my gosh, my parents are disappointed. I'm not a good enough kid. Okay, so I'm, I want you to write down this memory. It happened before age seven. And as you're writing, I'm just going to explain why before the age of seven. Because before the age of seven, you're literally just a little subconscious mind. Your conscious, rational, logical thinking processes have not yet been developed in your mind. So you're just a subconscious. So everything that is happening, you are taking in and this is becoming your truth. And you're believing things about yourself, about the world, about how things work based on what you are seeing and what you are consuming. Okay, so I want you to try and come up with three memories before the age of seven. Just again, even if you are writing nonsense right now, I want you to write out memories that maybe your sister said something to you, maybe again, a teacher or a parent that would make you believe you're not good enough. Again, that's my example. Maybe you're doing a different limiting belief. Okay, and then now step number four, after you've written out these memories, I want you to write about each of them, so I hope you have three, of why they are not you anymore. Why is that not you anymore? So for example, my memory, I would write, I am not six years old anymore just because my teacher said that I wasn't doing a good enough job in school doesn't mean that is my truth now. Now I'm an adult, I'm not meant to be good at everything, I don't even like math and, well, no, I did like science. I don't even like math, so it doesn't even matter. I'm going to rant why this isn't you anymore because your subconscious is holding on to this memory and this significant event that it's painful and the limiting beliefs I'm not good enough. Maybe now I'm thinking I'm not smart enough and not confident to put myself in an area where it's intelligent people because in school I was told I'm not good enough from that young age. And going on a rant why this isn't you anymore and why it doesn't even matter, like your subconscious needs that. It needs to work through that. This is that that inner work to pull the root out of where the limiting belief has started. Okay, I hope this is making sense to you. And now the last step is once you go on a rant for all of those why that's not you anymore, is picking now an affirmation to recite that goes along, which is a liberating belief, okay? But remember the steps are before are really important. If you don't pull that root out and deal with it and work through the events that have led to the significant events, is the affirmations won't work. They just, they don't, they won't. You cannot put pa positive affirmations over a deep-seated negative limiting belief. You can't override it. So a positive affirmation that you could pick now that you've seen, okay, well, this isn't me. I'm not meant to be good at everything in grade two. <laughs> My new affirmation is I am smart. I'm smart AF. I am intelligent. I can I excel in the things that I love and I'm great at because I enjoy it. 
And number six, this is the most important one. I really want you to understand this one is when you are saying affirmation, you have to involve emotion and your body because you're only dealing with one part of you if you're only saying it. When you own the belief, when you say it with emotion, when you like get your body involved, like I was the most intelligent person in the world, like that might not be your affirmation. I just got really excited there. <laughs> you want to own it, you want to believe it. And if you say it into a mirror, your eyes are like the peoples to your soul, it becomes even that more powerful. Okay? So this is how you'll actually get your affirmations to work. Dun, 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 dun. So again, that is a very powerful exercise to go through and to do. Kind of gives you a little taste of how I work with clients. We definitely go much deeper and a longer process and I guide them through it. But again, this is a good start for you in their work. Inner work is so, so integral for your mental health, for your mindset, for you feeling good and for manifestation. It really all ties in together. Hope you learned a lot. Questions, I'll leave them in a in the comments and I am happy to answer all of them. Love and light to you beautiful souls.